In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, the season of Lent ends this evening, this night, Maundy Thursday night, when we enter into the three great days, what the Church calls the Triduum, when through various celebrations we go through the Passion, our Lord's Passion, right up to Calvary, and Jesus being buried in the tomb, and of course um, ending, or should I say beginning, with the celebration of Easter itself on the third day. And the journey begins tonight, on this most holy night, with Jesus and his disciples gathered together in the upper room. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. So let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Special prayer for our celebration. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and for ever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 1. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, 
unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen trying to keep safe in the coronavirus pandemic. My hands have nearly worn away with washing them. Then there is that alcoholic gel, it's terrible stuff, which plays havoc with your hands, but very important stuff nonetheless. But soap and water, far more important. And the Archbishop of York has suggested that when we wash our hands with soap and water, we should recite the Lord's Prayer. A relatively long prayer, making sure that we wash our hands thoroughly. And it's good to pray. But what about our feet? Are we so concerned about them? Well, we certainly won't be touching our faces with our feet. So perhaps we are not so careful in the way that we look after them. But things were different in biblical times when... Water was often used to wash uh, uh, people's feet before they um, shared in a meal. And I just love that uh, picture in the book of Genesis where Abraham provides water for those three important visitors who came to him and Sarah. Let a little water be brought to wash your feet. And at the time of Jesus, people wore what the Romans called caliga, which were a kind of uh, sandal. And uh, they were quite primitive. And the straps at the top of the foot uh, were very, very thin, which meant that your feet got very dirty. Uh, muddy streets, hot weather or cold weather, wet weather. Your feet got very uh, dirty indeed. So washing your feet before sharing in a meal was an important thing to do. Uh, and in Roman times, people uh, would recline at a table, which meant that your feet were sticking out behind you and not hidden under the table. And uh, if your feet were dirty, then yuck. Uh, those dirty feet were were there for all to see. So the washing of feet, if you didn't do it yourself, then of course uh, the lowest of the low in the house would wash them for you, a slave or a servant. Well, on that first Maundy Thursday at the Last Supper in the upper room, the disciples were eating their supper, their final supper, and um, they hadn't washed their feet. We know that because Jesus did it later on while they were having the meal. So why, why was that? Obviously, time was short 
the end for Jesus was near. His hour had come and there was no time to lose. And here were a few precious moments to share with his disciples before the drama of the passion and the trial of the cross. And perhaps that's the reason why uh, they'd skipped the washing of the feet. But perhaps Jesus had planned it so, so that he could um, actually give, give them this sign. Well, John's Gospel is the only Gospel that records Jesus taking a, a break from the meal to wash the feet of his friends. Why? For the author of John's Gospel, this was a significant sign that sums up the role, the whole reason why we are followers of Christ. Whereas Matthew, Mark and Luke focus on the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the wine in order to focus upon the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, um, sharing in the, the wine, the, the bread that becomes his body and the wine that becomes his blood. But not for John. John doesn't mention the bread and the wine. And so there's no institution of the Eucharist or the Holy Communion in John's Gospel. Instead, the sacrament, the tangible grace, is Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. An active parable, if you like, of the divine humility. What a beautiful Im image of God bowing down before his disciples to take the feet of his disciples into his hands. And so here Jesus is giving a mandate for their lives from now on. And the very name for today, Maundy Thursday, comes from the root, the root word for mandate, the Latin mandatum, meaning commandment. Just as Jesus said to his disciples and says to us today, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Now the one blessing of the lockdown is that um, tonight I, my task before sharing in the Eucharist would be to gather a group of willing volunteers, stress upon willing volunteers, who would offer their feet to be washed during the Eucharist. And I often think um, about the embarrassment because I imagine myself in, 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 you know, in the congregation, if I was a member of the congregation, I would hide myself behind a pillar because of the thought of someone washing my feet. Well, what are feet like? They're embarrassing, aren't they? They might be calloused, they might be misshapen, by nasty bunions or corns or ingrowing toenails. They might be sweaty. They might have cracked heels or even, dare I say it, fungus problems. And I hope, hope you're not having a meal at this time as I describe embarrassing feet. Yes, feet can be embarrassing in the same way that our lives can be embarrassing. As we hide our feet, so we hide our inner lives. The secret sins and the shameful deeds that we dare not admit even to ourselves. So we come tonight at our Lord's invitation. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Come, think of Jesus washing your feet, indeed, washing your life, washing your inner lives, washing your heart, washing away all those things of which we are ashamed. And so we surrender our burden to Christ. Anyway, he knows us intimately. He knows all about us, but he needs us to own what is wrong in our lives and then to trust that he has the power to heal 
and to renew us. This is what is at the heart of these three great days, the Tridium, the salvation of the world, the salvation of you and me. Isn't that what Easter is all about? The victory, the victory that a loving God has won over sin and death. Well, I've talked about feet being ugly, but they can be beautiful as well. What do I mean? I'm not thinking here of lovely, podgy, cuddly feet of a baby. And although baby feet are very beautiful and cuddly, but our feet can be beautiful too. Our feet can be beautiful when they take up Christ's mandate to follow in the way of his love. To love even the unlovely. This is our calling. To stoop before the world in service. We do what beautiful feet do in the scriptures. Feet that follow. Thinking of our own feet. Seeking to follow. Feet that are bearers of good news. Feet that are bearers of peace. Of forgiveness of compassion, mercy and love. Feet that make a stand for truth, for righteousness. Hear what gracious words the prophet Isaiah says. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace. What magnificent words. We can, and many do, make a stand for Jesus. We give thanks for the feet of the persecuted and for the Christ who stands with them. The Christ who stands with us in this present moment. We can stand with Jesus and for Jesus. Martin Luther is famous for his words. Here I stand, I can do no other. Here I stand. I can do no other. May these words be on our lips as our feet follow in the way. The way who is Jesus, the way that leads to life, eternal life. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Give courage to the weak. Be unashamed to praise him. Be bold, his name to speak. Confront the cross unflinching. Christ's love has set us free. He conquered death forever and lives eternally. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some words from a poem called God in an Apron. Tenderness encircled us as he bowed before us. He knelt and said, I choose to wash your feet because I love you. God in an apron kneeling, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was embarrassed until his eyes met mine. I sent my value then. He touched my feet. He held them in his strong brown hands. He washed them. I can still feel the water. I can still feel the touch of his hands. I can still see the look in his eyes. Then he handed me the towel and said, As I have done, so you must do. Learn to bow, learn to kneel. Let your tenderness encircle everyone you meet. Wash their feet. Not because you have to, but because you want to. It seems I've stood 2,000 years holding that towel in my hands. As I have done, so must you do. Keeps echoing in my heart. There are so many feet to wash. 
I keep saying, No! I hear God's voice resounding through the years. There are only my feet. What you do for them, you do for me. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father, through Christ the Saviour of the world. Father, on this night he was betrayed. Your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. So in a moment of silence, just making our own prayers to Almighty God and remember all those suffering from COVID-19, those who have lost their lives and we pray for those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray as our Redeemer has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.